Exposition by Charles Haddon Spurgeon Isaiah 49, 13-26 Verse 13 Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. When God blesses his church, he blesses the world through her. Therefore, heaven and earth are invited to be glad in the gladness of the church of God. Oh, that God would visit his church, no, he has already done so, and I feel inclined to cry out, as the text does, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people. 14. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. We often judge contrary to the truth and when God is blessing us, we dream that he has forgotten us. Oh, wicked unbelief! Cruel unbelief! It robs God of glory, it robs us of comfort. It snatches the song out of our mouth and fills our soul with groaning. Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. 15. Can a woman forget the sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. The child is in a condition in which it reminds the mother of itself, her sucking child, her own child. Can she forget it? It is not according to nature. Yet, says the Lord, should nature change? And mother's monsters prove, Zion still dwells upon the heart of everlasting love. What is true of God's church as a whole, is true of every member of it. If any of you think that God has passed over you, one of his believing children, you think what is untrue. He cannot do it. It would be contrary to his nature. As long as he is God, he must remember his people. 16. Behold, I have engraved you upon the palms of my hands. How appropriately Christ can say this when he looks on the nail prints, I have engraved you upon the palms of my hands. As I said, this morning, Jesus can give nothing, he can take nothing, he can do nothing, he can hold nothing without remembering his people, I have engraved you upon the palms of my hands. How I love that verse of Top Lady's hymn that speaks of this blessed truth of God. My name from the palms of his hands. Eternity will not erase impressed on his heart it remains, in marks of indelible grace. Yes, I to the end shall endure, as sure as the earnest is given, more happy, but not more secure. The glorified spirits in heaven. 16. 17. Your walls are continually before me. Your children shall make haste. There shall be many of them. Converts shall be added to the church in great numbers. They shall hurry up, they shall not be long in coming. Very often they delay too long. The promise is, your children shall make haste. 17. Your destroyers and they that made you waste shall go forth of you. I wish this were carried out. If it were, many of the churches of Christ which are plagued with false doctrines and worldly habits, which are laying them waste, would be delivered from those curses. The enemies outside the walls, however malicious they are, will never be so mischievous as the traitors inside the fortress. Save Troy from the wooden horse and save Zion from the traitors in her midst that seek to do her harm. 18. 
Lift up your eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together, and come to you. There is a great company coming. The church is going to be increased. Have faith in God. We are not going to receive them, now, only by ones and twos, we thank God we receive them by tens and scores. They are coming by hundreds and by thousands, let us expect them. By faith, let us see them coming even now. It is remarkable that this sermon and exposition, which was selected long ago for publication this month, should be issued just as the tabernacle church is again having a large ingathering of converts. Those who have regularly read the sermons have been struck with the amazing appropriateness of several of them, either to the condition of the tabernacle church, or the general state of the churches of our land. A notable instance of this fact is described in the personal notes of the sword and the trowel for July. Many can see the overruling hand of the Lord even in the order in which the sermons have been published. 18. As I live, says the Lord, you shall surely clothe yourselves with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on you as a bride does. What an ornament to a church, her converts are. These are our jewels. We care nothing for gorgeous architecture or grand music in the worship of God. Our true building is composed of our converts, our best music is their confession of faith. May God give us more of it. 19-21 For your waste and your desolate places, and the land of your destruction, shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants and they that swallowed you up shall be far away. The children which you shall have, after you have lost the other, shall say again in your ears, The place is too straight for me, give place to me that I may dwell. Then shall you say in your heart, Who has begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who has brought up these? Behold, I was left alone, these, where had they been? Sometimes a church is brought very low, there are no additions, there is no unity, everything is breaking up and going to pieces. When God visits the church, what a change is seen. Then people come flocking to it and the church wonders where the converts came from. May the Lord make us wonder in that fashion. It will take a great deal to astonish us, after all these years of mercy, yet the Lord can do it. It may be he will make these latter days to be better than the former. Though we have had nearly forty years of blessing together, he may yet increase it and give us to rejoice yet more and more. 22. Thus says the Lord God. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. We do not mind how they are brought if they do but come. Some in the arms and some after the oriental method of putting the child on the shoulder. When God lifts up his hand, great wonders of mercy and grace are worked. 23. And kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. It will take a long time before they learn that art, for kings and queens have generally been destroyers of the church of Christ. Those will be grand days when kings shall be the nourishers of the church and queens are nursing mothers. 23. They shall bow down to you with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. I have heard the first part of this verse quoted as an argument for the union of church and state, kings shall be your foster fathers, and queens your nursing mothers. I have not the slightest objection, 
if they will bow down to the church, with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of her feet. What is proposed to us is that the church should bow down to the state, with her face toward the earth and lick up the dust of the feet of the state, by becoming obedient to rules and regulations made by princes and parliaments. This is not according to the mind of God, nor according to the heart of his people. 23. And you shall know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. If we wait for Christ, for his coming, for the help which he brings, for the salvation that is worked by him, we shall not be ashamed. 24-26. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your children. And I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood, as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I the Lord am your Saviour and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. The mighty may hold their prey with a strong hand, but there is a stronger hand that will deliver the captive. It is Jehovah, the Saviour, the Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob, who says, I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your children. Here is a divine promise for every parent to plead, I will save your children. May the Lord give you grace to claim that promise, even now for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen.